morality and temporal sequence. While literature has treated all the psychological species of erotic conflict, the simplest external source of conflict has remained unnoticed because of its obviousness. It is the phenomenon of prior engagement. A loved person refuses herself to us not through inner antagonisms and inhibitions, too much coldness or repressed warmth, but because a relationship already exists that excludes another. Abstract temporal sequence plays in reality the part one would like to ascribe to the hierarchy of feelings. In being previously engaged, there is, apart from the freedom of choice and decision, also an accidental element that seems in flat contradiction to the claims of freedom. Even and precisely in a society cured of the anarchy of commodity production, there could scarcely be rules governing the order in which one met people. Such an arrangement would amount to the most intolerable interference with freedom. Thus, the priority of the fortuitous has powerful arguments on its side. Someone ousted by a newcomer is always misused. A shared past life annulled, experience itself deleted. The irreversibility of time constitutes an objective moral criterion, but it is one intimately related to myth, like abstract time itself. The exclusiveness implicit in time gives rise, by its inherent law, to the exclusive domination of hermetically sealed groups, finally to that of big business. Nothing is more touching than a loving woman's anxiety, lest love and tenderness, her best possession just because they cannot be possessed, be stolen away by a newcomer, simply because of her newness, itself conferred by the prerogative of the older. But from this touching feeling, without which all warmth and protection would pass away, an irresistible path leads, by way of the little boy's aversion for his younger brother and the fraternity student's contempt for his fag, to the immigration laws that exclude all non-Caucasians from social democratic Australia, and right up to the fascist eradication of the racial minority, in which indeed all warmth and shelter explode into nothingness. Not only were all good things, as Nietzsche knew, once bad things, the gentlest, left to follow their own momentum, have a tendency to culminate in unimaginable brutality. It would serve no purpose to try to point to a way out of this entanglement, yet it is undoubtedly possible to name the fatal moment that brings the whole dialectic into play. It lies in the exclusive character of what comes first. The original relationship in its mere immediacy already presupposes abstract temporal sequence. Historically, the notion of time is itself formed on the basis of the order of ownership, but the desire to possess reflects time as a fear of losing, of the irrecoverable. Whatever is, is experienced in relation to its possible non-being. This alone makes it fully a possession, and thus petrified, something functional that can be exchanged for other equivalent possessions. Once wholly a possession, the loved person is no longer really looked at. Abstraction in love is the complement of exclusiveness, which manifests itself deceptively as the opposite of abstract, a clinging to this one unique being. But such possessiveness loses its hold on its object precisely through turning it into an object and forfeits the person whom it debases to mine. If people were no longer possessions, they could no longer be exchanged. True affection would be one that speaks specifically to the other and becomes attached to beloved features and not to the idol of personality, the reflected image of possession. The specific is not exclusive. It lacks the aspiration to totality. But in another sense, it is exclusive. Nevertheless, or Sorry, but in another sense, it is exclusive. Nevertheless, the experience indissolubly bound up with it does not indeed forbid replacement, but by its very essence precludes it. The protection of anything quite definite is that it cannot be repeated, which is just why it tolerates what is different. Underlying the property relation to human beings, the exclusive right of priority is the following piece of wisdom. After all, they are all only people, which one it is does not really matter. Affection which knows nothing of such wisdom need not fear infidelity, since it is proof against faithlessness.